Hey guys, welcome back to Sky Talks Books. My name is Sky, and I do in fact talk books. And this particular day, I would like to talk about the love hypothesis. Whenever I found out that the love hypothesis was like a, a sort of a fanfic, based on a fanfic about Kylo Ren from Star Wars, but not just Kylo Ren, but like Adam Driver playing Kylo Ren, I was like, yeah, immediately gotta read that book. Cause Adam Driver, Adam Driver for me, is the most beautiful man in the world. I remember I had my phone background for the longest time was him holding a goat. I'll, I'll put the picture here. So, um, I, but I don't know anything about Star Wars, just wanna say that, never seen it. So the love hypothesis is in fact, a fake dating trope romance. And I think that's the, its first problem. I do like fake dating tropes, don't get me wrong. It's not my favorite. My favorite is probably friends to lovers, but um, I do like fake dating trope as well. But the problem with it is, it is hard to make it realistic. And that was my first problem with this book. The whole premise was pretty unrealistic, like w even why they were fake dating. Because look, fake dating doesn't really happen in real life. So yeah, straight off the bat, it was, it was so unrealistic. Okay, so this book is about, um, what's her name? You know it's a good book when you can't remember the main character's name. It's something like Olive. It's Olive. So it's about Olive, and she is a PhD student, and she's studying... Look, there's a lot of experiments, there's a lot of labs, there's a lot... She is trying to cure pancreatic cancer. She's doing her PhD on finding markers to diagnose pancreatic cancer early. So it's... She's a woman in STEM. Love that. I did actually really love that. I loved any time that there was lab references and science references because I actually felt like I did learn some things. And she is fake dating um, this professor, basically, Adam. And he is pretty much renowned for being a big jerk, like just making every student cry. And okay, so why are they fake dating, you may ask? Right. Her best friend wants to date her kind of ex-boyfriend, like they weren't even fully dating, but her friend won't because, you know, girl code or whatever. And the only way Olive can convince her friend, no, it's fine, you, you can date him, I really don't mind, instead of like sitting down and having like an adult conversation with her friend or just letting time pass until it's not weird anymore, she's like, no, actually I need to have an entire fake boyfriend and it's gonna be this professor. Okay, so that's the premise. Already it's pretty unrealistic. Like you'd have to have the emotional intelligence of a preschooler to think that that is the solution to the problem. So it's pretty unrealistic, but that's fine. We don't really read romances for the realism. Okay, let's talk about the things I did like, first of all. I loved that I could picture him as Adam, <laughs> like Adam Driver. And I did really like his character. Um, I thought he was quite, you know, obviously he's grumpy. It, so they're covering another trope, the, the grumpy sunshine one, where like one of them is like really chipper and the other is not at all. And the other one is like kind of serious and grumpy and moody. Like I liked that. And like I say, I like the science bits, love that. And I did kind of believe their chemistry, I did. Okay, that's where it ends. Here's some things that I didn't like. I have my notes here of things that I wanna cover. Cause I had a lot of problems. I did have a lot of problems, okay. This girl took so long to realize she had a crush. Yes, again, with the emotional intelligence. Anytime she was clearly having a physiological reaction to this man, she was clearly like her heart was fluttering, she was, you know, feeling the heat or whatever. There was no end to the amount of things she put it down to. Oh, I'm just hungry. Oh, I just haven't slept. Oh, I'm just stressed. It's like, really? Like, you're that out of touch with your own emotions? So yeah, it was kind of a case of like, the readers know, but she's not supposed to know. Okay, the weird teasing banter. Okay, I didn't like that. There was so much banter, it was mostly just, it was very heavy on banter, which I do like. I do like banter because I think that's a very realistic way to convey crushes and like, friendship and relationships and stuff because it's a lot of banter. I just didn't like the banter. The only two types of banter were him teasing her about how much sugar she eats and like her crazy Starbucks orders. And she teased him about his age, where she's like late 20s and he's like 33. 
and she's constantly making it out like he's on death's door. <laughs> like, plus Adam was a professor, which meant that he was older and all that, 30 something. He did look fit, but he probably had a bum knee and was only a few years short of osteoporosis. <laughs> so this is a bit of dialogue. So she's telling him, she's trying to convince him that the flu is really bad. And she's like, hey, the flu is more serious than you think. He's like, it's not that bad. She's like, it is, especially for people like you, like me, you know, people of a certain age. Okay, so I really didn't like that, especially since, like, there's also then a scene where he is pushing a truck up a hill by himself, successfully, and she's all, like, obviously swooning, or she doesn't know she's swooning, she thinks she's hungry, of course. But she's not concerned about that. She's worried he has a bum knee, but not that he's, he's pushing um, a truck up a hill by himself. Like, that is dangerous. Like, I know someone who had a heart attack that way. Like, it's not worth it. Just call triple A, you know? Also, the fact that, like, her one way of describing him all the time was just how huge he was. Like, I get it. He, he's tall, of course. He's, he's well built. As we know, Adam Driver is. But, like, just every adjective was about how huge he is. It started to sound like, um, who's the big green one? The Hulk. It sounded, started to sound like the Hulk fan fiction. And then there was something that just didn't quite make sense. Like, so she's like sitting on his lap, okay, in this auditorium at this uh, academic speech because there's, there's just no room. And her friend who is always, who believes that they're dating, who is always pushing her to do these like really inappropriate like um, PDA as if it's just totally normal. Like, he's your boyfriend, go on, like do that. Um, so she has to do it. So anyway, she has to sit on his lap uh, and this is a scene where she's sitting on his lap. I'm sorry, she whispered to Adam. He was so tall, her mouth was not quite level with his ear. That's not true. I don't care how tall someone is. If you're sitting on their lap, you're, you're gonna be a little bit above them unless she was like literally down like this. Like, there's no way their ear is gonna be like not quite level with your mouth if you're sitting on their lap. Am I wrong? I've sat on tall people's laps, okay? Okay, weird flex. Okay, we need to talk about Fluchella, okay. One day she's like, oh, are you going to Fluchella? And he's like, what is Fluchella? And she's like, oh, 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 you're so old, you don't know anything. Fluchella is where we all go and get our flu shots. Okay, fine. And it's clear, basically, that he doesn't want to do that because he has a huge fear of needles. And she thinks that this is just the most adorable, precious thing she's ever heard. Like, this is when she's like, seriously falling for him. Like, this is what pushes her over the edge is actual phobia of needles. And she doesn't take it seriously at all. And yet she's like, kind of fetishizing it in a weird way and also infantilizing him. And she's also laughing. She finds this hilarious. And I get it, okay, he's a strong strapping man and oh, he has a fear, but it's like really not helping with like the toxic masculinity uh, situation. Like, I think, we shouldn't be like shocked or find it funny when a man has a phobia. Okay, so she pressures him and drags him to flipping Fluchella. He gets the flu shot and then like, they don't really text that much. But the next day she gets a text from him that just makes her like froth at the mouth. <laughs> it's just simply, my arm is sore. And she just absolutely loves this. Um, again, cause it's like so adorable. Okay, fine. So then, like she's been mentioning, we know that she sort of has a, a fear, not sort of, she has a fear of public speaking and she gets picked to like present her findings at some big conference and she starts freaking out. And not only freaking out, but freaking out that people aren't taking her seriously enough, like her um, advisor, academic advisor, is like, oh, you'll be fine, don't worry. And she's like, no, you don't understand. Like, so whenever Adam has a genuine fear of needles, it's like a funny, cute thing to laugh at. But when you have a phobia of public speaking, it's a disaster and everyone needs to just drop what they're doing and take it really seriously. She was a bit hypocritical. Okay, another instance of Olive's extreme hypocriticalness, hypocrisy. So she's constantly saying how difficult and busy um, academic life is, especially in, as a PhD student, like, she really is emphasizing that. You don't have time to eat, you don't have time to sleep, you don't have time to go to the bathroom. So when she finally figures out that she has a crush on Adam, she texts her um, housemate and bestie, um, not the one who 
she's pretending this whole flipping thing for him, but her male bestie, she's like, um, I need to meet you, I need to talk to you. And he's like, oh yeah, I can maybe do lunch. I'm like in the middle of a, like a lab experiment right now. And she's like, no, now. And he's like, okay, I'll meet you in 10 minutes in the quad. And it's like, so your like little realization that is like glaringly obvious to everybody else is more important than Malcolm's whatever he was doing. Like, I just thought that was a bit, like you sh she should have more empathy and understanding. So she was pretty inconsiderate and unlikable in that way. Okay, the hotel stay pressure. Okay, so there's a trip that they're all going on, an academic trip with the college. And her friends are like, oh yeah, we didn't book a room for you in the hotel because, because we presumed you would be staying with your boyfriend. Um, which she doesn't want to do. She doesn't want to stay in a hotel room with Adam, um, which is fair. She's, he's not actually her boyfriend. So uh, she says this to Adam, like, oh, yeah, I'm just gonna, like, there's no more hotel rooms left. So, like, I'm gonna just book one outside of the city or whatever. And he's like, no, no, you mustn't do that. Like, he doesn't speak like that. He doesn't speak like an Englishman. Uh, he, he insists that she stays in his hotel room. And she's like, no, I don't want to do that. Like, uh, I don't want to put you out. And he's like, no, it, it wouldn't be putting me out at all. And, like, she says no so many times. And he's like, look, I won't be able to focus on anything else. If I know that you're gonna have to be traveling in and out of the conference center in a strange city at nighttime. And I just thought that was a bit crap. Like he was pressuring her so much and his reason was just so stupid. Like she's in her mid to late twenties. Like she has survived this long. You know, I think she knows how to navigate public transport. And yeah, that to me was like a red flag. And I don't think that fit with the rest of his personality because he, he was so like considerate and non pressury and stuff like that. Uh, and then just to be like, no, stay in my hotel room, was weird. Um, but alas, she did in fact stay in his hotel room. Mm, flashbacks. Uh, I, I think that's pretty much it. Okay, so having said that, okay, I, I think that is all the things that I had a problem with. Other than that, I actually really enjoyed it. You know, it was, did I? <laughs> I like I read it. I read it all the way through. Do I think that it's overhyped? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't have a lot of reference points, like points of reference. I've only read one other like uh, romance book and that is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. And I really enjoyed that. But look, it was a nice fun read. Like it was fun. It was a good time. And I love Adam Driver. And that's all really. And that's it. Oh, don't forget to subscribe. I don't usually talk about romance books. So if you're subscribing just for this, Maybe don't, because I don't read a lot of romance.